hopefully uh, this headline is going to be good, because this is, like, one of the big ones <laughs> that have been coming up. Like, one that's just been, we've been waiting for, because, like, the last six months haven't been, like, too crazy, besides just, like, seasonal events, you know, Purple Trigger. I think the biggest thing in the last six months has been Dark Falls Dalian, and that's about it. So hopefully with this new field, this new action system, and whatever else that this month is going to be bringing, it's going to be bigger than that. But I wouldn't expect something super huge, like version 2 levels <laughs> of, like, content. So, like, not adding, like, a whole mode of, like, creative space or anything like that, or, like, new systems with the cosmetics, a whole new enemy type, like the Starless. Like, maybe, I don't know, there's so something like a beast-looking thing here, so maybe? Maybe? I, I don't know. But I'm not really expecting a whole lot. Like, I I'm expecting it to be good, but not insane. That's where I'm at right now, but let's watch. Well, let's see what happens. Hello, everyone. All right, here we go. We're going right into it. All right, please give us some juicy stuff. Please be juicy stuff with the field and not just, like, combat zone garbage or something like that. I don't want the same bullshit that we've had. Chapter 7, okay. So there's the story part. So it's Chapter 7. So people were saying like this was gonna be like the start of effectively episode two, but yeah, it seems like I don't know if there's really an episodic episodic format with the story, just like chapter after chapter. Uh, progress in Lucille's investigation yields the discovery of a new area, nameless city. Lucille. It leads outside of Lucille to what we believe outside. May be some kind of resurgent arc space. I wonder if that's gonna be on Halpa itself, or if it's gonna be in that space station, like I was talking about. Because, like, Dozer and others have been hinting at this, like, space station that's above, like, Lucille up in space. Where there's, like, some resurgent stuff, in, in, a, in a sense, or something there. And that's where all the Meteorn have been coming from. Like, Lucille itself is, like, a different thing. Where that's where the other Halfians were made, and, like, all the, the dolls were originating from, and, like, the environment stuff. This is like the, the control center of Halpha. But the space station seems to be something different. So I wonder if that's what this is. Thanks for coming. We were having Meet a Faria, who seems with her, off. All of a sudden, something changed. Uh, and the blue, she told us that she wanted the three of you here. Uh-oh, what's you happening? Arrived. What the? Is she evil? Have you have arrived. Ooh. Happens to her. New quest, Nameless City Exploration. Ooh, I mean this area looks nice. Hey, what is that? What what is that? Is that like a boost thing? The goal is to collect rewards by exploring the new field, nameless city, collecting exploration points, and unlocking chests. Okay, see so yeah, there's a little point thing up here, and there's like a level to the points, I guess. And you got a time limit. Yeah, point rate plus twenty five percent. It says. Oh, was that like a was that a stellar grace? What the? I guess that's like one of the chests. Arms refiners, growth mints. Photon chunk twos, what the two endemios, ice school cubes and orbs. Why that little rare drop? What was in there? It didn't show it. What was that? What was the gold drop in that chest? Okay, so you can get some uh good materials there. I wonder if there's like some super high level material in that chest too, or you can get like weapons. Six thousand points. Is this like cost points to open? Like when he Oh, okay, so you need to gather points and then yeah, it takes it away. It looks like it does drop weapons, too. Okay. Unless if that's, like, gold crims there, but... I mean, I got the gold... Very drop symbol. So defeating enemies are by touching unlocked signs scattered around the field. Well, that's kind of neat. It's like a different different play on combat zones. It's not a direct copy, thank God. Also be trials with lots of unlocked signs. Okay. I like that little uh, animation there for that. Oh, what the? <laughs> they got, like, whole-ass puzzles and stuff. New 11-star rarity Aridim Weapon Series. Okay. So, is this, like, gonna be, like, the more likely 11-star over wing guards? I think it's gonna be, like, the commonplace thing. Uh... EX Risky Stance PP. They always drop with three types of EX augments with unique effects affixed! Wait a second. Potency 4.5%, potency floor increase plus 2%, PP plus 25 slash 30% chance to recover 10 PP when hit by attack, 5 second cooldown, 10% chance of 1 damage, wait, what the? 10% chance of 1 damage to yourself? 
<laughs> what? So you're gonna, just gonna be like damaging yourself over time, but like it's only one, so it's like whatever. Okay, that's that's cool. So there's like very different uh, augments. I'm guessing you can't get these augments to drop in like a capsule form, so you can only get it on the Aerodim series for now. Now this is what I've been kind of asking for: is augments that are already affixed to gear when they drop. So I guess this is like this is their answer to that. These EX augments. So. I'm guessing these are going to be pretty powerful, considering like this is just the one here, and this is almost like an Anatty. That I, that's very close. It's 0.5% potency off, and like a little bit of floor. So this is like a must. <laughs> I like, guess kind of depends on the attack of uh, this weapon. I don't know if they showed that. Let me see if I can like pause it fast enough. Uh, I don't, I don't think it does. Not in this screen, anyways. All right, there it is. 1041 at plus 60. I think that's a little bit less than Wingard. Like, just a, a little bit. Oh, and this one... Okay, so they all have 4.5% potency and 2% potency floor. So these are going to be better than the majority of augments that we have right now. All down resistance plus 5%. PP consumption minus 15% when using a different PA or technique. So like if you alternate, that's kind of cool. This is actually like augments that can change how you play. Hmm. I mean, I've been really wanting that too. I was kind of like expecting it to more be in potentials, but like if it's an augments too, like that, pretty big. Okay, is so it gonna show this one? Just frame counter R. Um, all down resistance for five. Side step counter occurs when you perform a normal attack after you break fall a launch or knockback. Okay, so that so like after you get hit and you use like the little bounce back after you get knocked to like the ground basically. So you can perform a side sub counter afterwards. That's actually really cool. <laughs> what the hell? This is actually like cool stuff. So these augments are gonna be like game changing. Like actually change how you play. What the fuck? <laughs> well, I'm liking that. I'm liking this so far. I wonder what other ones there are, because that's only three of them, right? So there's gonna be more. Oh, there's that enemy that they had the silhouette of. That's a Starless. Big ol' axe. Okay. Defense is reduced in accordance with the exploration points you hold, and your points get halved when you're in. Ooh. So you really don't want to die. If you die, you're losing half your points. And so, and you're easier to get killed with the defense being lowered. Uh, the key is to open chests to consume your exploration points periodically. Yeah, so you don't just hold on to a ton of points. So that's how you play this. Okay. Due to exploration points changes, damage taken increase level 4 has been applied. So, yeah, the more and more points that you have, the more damage you're going to take. So you want to spend them. Level cap raised to 90. Oh boy, more levels! Okay. With additional new quest level cap will be raised to 90. Yep. Uh, oh, what do we got here? Oh, Augma Transfer! Here it is! Oh, there is Augma Transfer passes. Oh, boy. They're going through that quick. Okay, let's see. So, Augma Transfer is finally going to be here. And this is happening, like, right away, right? Okay, so, Augments before transfer, Augments after transfer. Yeah, it looks like it's going to transfer everything just for a single pass. So this works differently from base game, where you needed, like, more passes for the more augments that you're transferring. So you're transferring augments, are you sure you wish to proceed? All the material items augments will be consumed, and the base item will acquire the augments. Okay, so the base item will not be destroyed, right? So just the augments transferring. Nice, nice. I wonder how we get that pass, though. Uh, oh, can you transfer the EX things to non? Yeah, I'm just not thinking about that. Can you transfer the EX to not Aridin? I wonder. Yeah, there's more of those augments. Light attack, protect, HP, dazzle, camouflage, HP, heavy attack, protect, HP. There's gonna be a lot of these different augments, huh? Oh, what the? August before transfer... Transferring EX Augments. I'm sure we should proceed. All the material items EX Augments will be consumed. The base item will kind of... But these are different ones. Wait a second. Oh, and the transfer doesn't cost a pass for these. For the EX. 
Is that stealth? Maybe. I, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, there's only Aerodims in that list, right? So maybe you can only transfer, like, the EX thing can only transfer between Aerodim weapons. Like, Dazzle Pods? Yeah, Dazzle Camo Pods, Dazzle Pods, and yeah, those are camos, are invisible. But, like, how is that gonna work? <laughs> are you gonna just, like, not get as much aggro or something? Because this is actually above and beyond what I was thinking was gonna happen so far already. Okay, but yeah, when you transfer, you get different EX things. So I wonder if that's just, like, randomized, or if it, there's, like, some sort of pattern here. Like, certain weapons only get certain EXs, or whatever. Uh, just the potency and some action behaviors for fighters. Okay, so here's the fighter, uh, expansion. Additional new classes and class skills and significantly updated effects. So it's gonna be similar to, like, what Ranger got then, huh? Oh, oh, that looks pretty cool. Ooh, it's all, like, lightning. Mmm. That's pretty cool, but I wonder what it's gonna come with, though, because, I mean, I didn't really get much there, not, much, not too many details. Yeah, the effects look good, though. Let's see, new theme for creative space and more. Yeah, the effects look good. Who's to say about what comes with it? What, Far Eastern theme. It's another theme to the creative spaces. Oh, some Japan parts. That's pretty cool. Additional setting for vital gauge design to hide the HP and PP gauge? Oh, okay, so it just shows the number, no longer the gauge. Okay. And uh, more backgrounds. That's a cool back, uh, theme for the crater space. It's pretty nice. AC Scratch ticket, Bridal Fantasia. Time to get woods. Oh, wait, maybe not. Okay, there's just some adventure wear in here. Is that supposed to be a wedding dress? <laughs> Is that a wedding dress? <laughs> oh, there it is. It's definitely uh, a little bit more revealing for a wedding dress. <laughs> Get a little spicy. Going straight to the honeymoon. <laughs> That's pretty good accessories. Some piercings, got a necklace, like jiggling all over the place. Feet! Oh, little rappy boots. Got some aura thing over here. Oh, what the? There's some, like, clown makeup. Ooh, the eyes. That's some scales. Sorcerer Circle portable holograms. Okay. Like, whatever to me. Ooh, weapon camo. Rave Fetter? Rave Fetter? <laughs> like, it's like skeletal gauntlet things. Like, raven feathers. That's pretty uh, good scratch, I think. I don't know how much I'll get out of this. I mean, if, it, if that cam was just Knuckles, then, you know. I don't really use Knuckles. But maybe with the fighter expansion, people are going to be playing fighter more. <laughs> what the? Airsoft? Uh, that's an airsoft rifle, huh? I don't know about that one. It looks a little bit real to me. <laughs> oh my god. And they got a different colored version the EX. Limit time quest special training sand road sprint. This is the 12th. Okay, so now we're getting to the next week. Oh, is this another Sonic themed one uh, for the birthday? Okay. December 10th. Nice, nice. I wonder how they're going to change it up. Is that... Wait, was that... Okay, that was Amy. For a second, I thought I saw silver. <laughs> the rings and chaos emeralds. That seems like a play on uh, the LTQ from before, the other Sonic one. Nice. Oh, they got Shadow over here. Woo! And this time with Shadow. Edgy. It's probably because of uh, the Sonic Generations like, Shadow thing coming out. That's probably why. Uh, AC Scratch, Dallas Avenue. I wonder if there's not too much in the following week, then. It's more just, like, Sonic Birthday and AC Scratch. Yeah, hopefully there's more to uh, June. I mean, there's a lot in the first week with the field and stuff. Or, but I haven't seen the action system yet. That still needs to be shown. 
So that's gonna be happening eventually. This one's uh pretty good. Too. Wait, is those were those vents? The vents here? <laughs> what the? Ooh, it's like chains. Oh what? Oh god, the shapes return! Oh no! I thought they were more like metallic though. The mom jeans. <laughs> Horrible hologram of a puddle. Okay. Polar bear. Ooh. Trianda, Phil. Or sword and artisan. And daggers and double saber. Taking a shower. Oh no, dude. Oh no. I thought what? I want to see a whole bunch of people taking a shower in the middle of the city. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh no, dude. God damn it. No buddy pose. Little twirl. That's a lot of twirling. Oh my god. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of like a, a Herta from a, a Honkai Star Rail. I can see somebody like cosplaying as Herta and just spinning around. <laughs> okay, so that's the first half. So the first week, there's a lot of stuff. What did you think? And the following week isn't as like crazy. Okay, the augment transfer and the EX augments huge. I mean, we knew the augment transfer was coming eventually. But, yeah, the EX augments, I'm definitely curious about those. Chapter 7 of the story. Like, how is that all going to affect the, the, the meta? Or what augments to go for? The area refers and how do you get the pass? City the augment transfer pass. It's a concrete jungle of buildings built with technology much more advanced than Halfa. Then, Much more the protagonists are summoned by Crawford and meet Faria, who seems a bit yeah, far is... off. Yeah, just, just a little bit off. <laughs> she turned into Sands. <laughs> Nameless City Exploration will be launched in Nameless City, which players first get a look at in the story. Yeah, this is like a cool uh, play on this unknown new field like an exploration zone or combat zone. Limit, and to open as many special item chests yeah, like... placed on the field. I wonder how is this going to work? Is it going to be like a room to go into, or is it like an instance? Like, an instance that you go in with a, a group pre-made, or like match-made? Or is it kind of like, where you just enter any other, like, zone? I'm not sure. ...field as possible, to earn as many rewards as possible. The exploration points needed to open the chests can be earned by defeating enemies, or by touching unlock signs scattered around the field. I wonder if these chests are, like, infinite, or if there's, like, a finite amount. Like, you only get so many chests in, like, a day, or a week, or... ever. <laughs> I'm guessing it's- I'm guessing it's not, like, one-time deals. It's probably... Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to, like, spam it forever or With not. Lots of unlocks I mean, like, everything else in NGS you can spam forever, so I'm more leaning towards hurt. that. <laughs> so make full use of objects placed in the field to collect exploration points. However, the more exploration points you have, the lower your defense gets. And if you get incapacitated, your points get slashed in half. They do not want to have a ton of points to get smoked. <laughs> Even with a tanky build. Your exploration points by opening chests to earn rewards. Many new enemies will appear in Nameless City, including... So you can't just go in willy-nilly, get all casual-like, and <laughs> just die all the time. Okay. Formidable enemies such as Valvelin Axe with their humongous axe and tiger like Gratigal. Those are some names. So that's the boss two new bosses. Valvelin X. So I wonder if like the extra point rate, because it showed like 25% and plus 50% here. Can't quite see it. But um I wonder if that's just like increased by playing more in the zone. Kind of like how with Nuisance Plants you get more buffs over time by staying there. Or if there's like some other mechanic. Yeah, it is pretty similar to Diablo 4's Hell Tides, yeah. Tasks ...to get your hands on N Master Cubes, N Augment Transfer... Just going around killing stuff, opening chests with the currency that you get from those set enemies. ...as well as titles. In addition, 
This quest will feature the new 11-star rarity Eridim weapon series. Yeah, the Eridim. I'm guessing you get these from the chests. That's probably why we saw that little gold animation on one of the chests. So you probably get these from that. And there's going to be just a ton of different uh, EX augments. The Eridim series can increase PP recovery amount and boost the Photon Blast gauge when attacking, in addition to a potential that increases the likelihood of critical hits. A potential that increases the likelihood of critical hits? Oh my god. So it's, uh, it got, it's got crit rate on it. So that means poor float. Oh my god. I just screwed that up. Floor potency is not going to matter as much then. Because you're going to be critting, which ignores it. Beginning June 5th, two new functions June will be added 5th. to the item lab that allow for the transfer of augments. First, all augment transfer will transfer all augments from a material equipment item by using an N augment transfer pass and meseta. Okay. Augments for weapons can be transferred from one weapon to another and augments from armor can be transferred from one armor to another, regardless of series or weapon type. But you can't transfer weapon to armor or armor to weapon. So it has to be, it has to be the same kind of gear, otherwise it won't work. So it transfers all augs to select equipment. The condition is that the number of material slots of the material item must be the same or less than the number of slots for the base item. Okay, so it can't be like upgraded higher than what you're putting into basically or it has to be on the same level so you can't take like a plus 80 thing and transfer augments into like a plus 60 thing because it has less slots in addition all augments will be moved to the base item after the transfer is completed so the slots of the material equipment item will be left empty yeah just be void uh, nothing Please there that it is not possible to select individual augments to be transferred it has to be everything Please note so yeah, it's an all or nothing deal. So you can't like say buy a thing in the shop that has like one of the good augs that you're missing and just transfer it in. Because then it'll just transfer everything that it did have. Okay. So it's not as uh it's a bit different from like base game, it seems. Where you can't just do like some or all. Yeah, it's a complete transfer. So this is more for those that like have upgraded and want to transfer what they've upgraded into the next thing. So it basically moves your progress from one thing to the next. <laughs> Is that, that's basically how it should be. That all augments of the material item will be overwritten onto the base item. So if the number of augments on the material item is less than on the base item, the total number of augments will be reduced. Yeah. Next, with EX Augment Transfer, you can similarly transfer only the EX Augments introduced earlier by consuming a Transfer Pass and Meseta. Wait, I don't know, when we saw it in the footage though, it didn't use a pass, right? For the EX thing? It just said it... Did it just say that it did? Or am I crazy? Yeah, when, it, when they're doing the EX Augment Transfer, there's no pass requirement. It's just Meseta. So I wonder if that's like a... Like... A mistake of heroes or like it's going to change once it's fully released but i think it should not require a pass so you can actually like just transfer these back and forth because that'd be kind of weird have like a separate pass for this thing like this ex transfer versus the normal transfer that'd be kind of like kind of convoluted these can be transferred when the base item and material item have the same number of ex augments same number of EX augments. The EX augments of the material item used for transfer will be lost as they are transferred to the base item. And the EX augments originally on the base item will be overwritten and disappear. But the, the thing I'm confused about is like, before transfer it shows these, right? The light and the dazzle camouflage and the heavy attack protect, whatever. But on this side, when it actually transfers, it's not all of those things. Like we still got the dazzle camouflage here. But then we have enemy field PP gauge and gradual PP gauge, so it's not the same. It's all made, oh, maybe you're right. Yeah, because this is before and after. Yeah, 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 okay. So it's taking, so this is what it has before, this is what, it, what what's after. Okay, that makes more sense. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Because like, I was just like visualizing, oh, this is the one weapon, and this is where it's like going to. 
and not like this is the same weapon just before and after. Yeah, I'm just being dumb. <laughs> I'm just being dumb about it. Okay. Because like the, the the arrows are misleading, I guess. Because I was thinking like, oh yeah, these augments are moving over here, but that's not how it is. <laughs> it's more like these are being replaced by this. In addition, when using a material item like the Eridim weapons introduced earlier that have EX augments from when it was dropped, it is possible to transfer all augments or do an EX augment transfer to any weapon from any series without consuming the designated item. Although not mentioned in the slide, in conjunction with the addition of this feature... Okay, this is very confusing. So, with normal transfer, it actually consumes the item? But I thought they said that it left it blank and it you'd still have it. They they they're fucking up the wording so much with this. So do you not keep the previous weapon or or not? <laughs> do, you, do you keep it or not? Because <laughs> I know it says down here there are also series of weapons that can transfer without consuming the dedicated item when used as material items. So yeah, this is just like a full transfer that. Deletes all the augments and just replaces everything on the next piece of gear. And that's going to cost a pass. So I think that's how that works. And there isn't anything else to it. I don't think it deletes the item that you're transferring from. Because that's how I currently understand it. And over here, there's an EX transfer. Where sometimes it's going to cost a pass based on the equipment. But if it's like Eridim to Eridim, it doesn't cost any pass in just Masetta. That's how I understand it so far. But I don't know if that's actually how it's going to be. But that's that's just what I understand from all this text and what Hero has said. Yeah, it does say dedicated item, but I think the, the dedicated item they're talking about is the pass and not the material item. Because they say material item for the weapon or the, the armor. And they say dedicated item for the pass, I believe. For selecting it's very confusing. Items, such as gold like, why don't they just say by consuming pass, the, the pass? Swords will also be changed. I don't know. So that auto sell drop items will be expanded to allow users to choose whether or not to automatically sell equipment with augments when they drop. Okay, so the auto sell is being changed to where you can say, oh, I don't want to sell things with the augments on it. <laughs> Even though you might have the, the rarity selected. In conjunction with this change, the specifications for selecting auto sell items such as gold prim swords will also be changed. So that from now on, selected items will always be sold automatically, regardless of the rarity setting of the sell conditions or the newly added augment setting. Okay. Along with the addition. Okay, so that, that was it with the dog tracer. So yeah, I think it's just like one of those things that we're gonna have to like mess around with in game to know for sure, for sure. Yeah, I think uh, I think we got it. I think we got it. Yeah, sometimes it's just not going to take a pass. The level cap for each class will also be increased. Oh tonight. no, there it is! Oh fuck! Plus, the enhancement cap for all weapons and arms going to plus ninety. To plus ninety. And now we got seven AUG slots. Increased to seven. Oh god! I I I was guessing that was going to happen. Either this month or a little bit later, but here it is. Not to get to plus ninety. In addition, that's gonna. If we don't get like a new thing, are we still gonna have like endemios, like just endemios, not like astrios drop or something else? Because like that's gonna take forever to upgrade something. Oh my god! The fighter class will receive balance adjustments, such as adjusting potency. That's gonna be painful. the movement performance of some actions. But hey, new aug class skills with major updates to effects will also be added. I mean, I guess with the transfer, we might be saving a lot of Masetta you know, re-augmenting things, so maybe it won't be so bad, maybe. There will also be a gear up your class special- If I never sold Mega Trials, I don't even know if Mega Trials will be used. It sounds like people would rather use the EX augments instead. And then just some of the current best in slot that we have. I don't know if Mega, Mega Trials are going to be used at all, like for the best in slot. I guess we'll find out. If you want yes, to go on armor? No. Uh, the way that the transfer works is it can only go weapon to weapon or armor to armor, and they did not show any armor that has EX augments, so. I'm gonna say no. It's just weapons for the time being. So I guess, like, for armor, you could still want the Mega Trial there. To be fair. <laughs> so, so, yeah. I guess, like, you would still use some Mega Trials. Unless there's, like, some new augment with the field itself besides EX augments.
Creative Space is getting a new Far Eastern theme featuring cherry blossoms and a sea of clouds. Yeah, this looks dope. Please enjoy the new atmosphere by decorating the this islands really and the sea of clouds. In addition, a special build part, the BP Link Teleporter, will be added. Link Register teleporter? the number of the creative space you want to go to in a Link Teleporter. Ooh. You can move directly to the registered space. That's kind of like a VR chat then. So you can link somebody else's space and just go directly to it with a teleporter. Or it can link one of your other spaces. Oh my god, that's like a huge ask. That's, <laughs> that's been asked since the beginning. So it's becoming more like a VR chat in a sense. That's like that's just amazing. Oh my god. So you can actually link like your own spaces and maybe have some stuff in between. I wonder because of that, because I've been making a Mario Party space. I wonder if I could have like one space be mainly the board. And then I could have another space be the games, or just more games, mini games. And people could just like go back and forth with that. Hmm. That'd be pretty cool. That that opens it up like big time. For like creative spaces. With this build part, you could separate the inside. Full dating and marriage mechanic by next summer. I mean, hey, we're getting some bridal outfits in a, in a scratch, you know, in the first week or whatever. So maybe it's gonna happen now. As a portal to introduce recommended spaces to friends. Uh, ERP Nexus already have been happening. You can also set them to an alliance space. So please use it and to alliance spaces. But that's huge for creative spaces. Utilize that's really nice. Points. We also have new features and elements on the way that will make things more convenient for you. First, we'll be adding a setting to the vital gauge designs that allows you to hide that's, the HP PP gauge. That's okay. Use this oh, that's to huge. see more of the vital gauge design artwork. Basically, yeah, it just opens it up so you can see the artwork a little bit more, I guess. You just don't have that bar anymore, you still just have the numbers. It does make it more difficult to keep track of your status, so it's recommended to have this gauge displayed if you're heading into combat. Like a big smug on my Note that this set big mug. no impact on the display of your party's members' HP PP gauges, nor on how you appear to other party members. So it doesn't affect other people's stuff. Okay. Next, the game will remember the last page you opened in item details. You can continuously refer back to the same page without having to find it again each time in the item list or prize list. This will be okay. useful when checking items that have a preview on the second page, such as stamps, or when checking new scratch ticket prizes. Oh, so like the pages like 1, 2, and 3 on different items, it'll just save it instead of like defaulting to 1. Okay, that's like... Nice, I, I guess. In addition, it's a minor thing. Items with expiration dates will be prioritized in the default sorting of the other category in the inventory. I guess you can see what's expiring. You can use this to make sure you remember like to use items with expiration dates. Faria and Zafeto are being added to Ark's ID backdrops. Even will be unlocked after earning a certain number of title points. So I see this bottom thing here. Now. Yeah, the more look slots, but for premium only though. Yeah, 50. Expanding the premium What's that, 20 more? We're adding Cause 20 30, right? Slots. Yeah, 20. 20 more slots. Have up to 50 that, I, I didn't think that was ever going to happen. I didn't think that was ever going to happen. So we actually got more look slots. Jesus. This is a huge. That's enough to put on your own fashion show. Yeah, it is only for premium, but I mean, there was already extra slots. Next up is the new. Uh, for premium too. So it's just more on top. But yeah, oh my God. Like there's some actually uh, pretty nice stuff like cosmetic and gameplay wise so far. Uh, I don't know what else they got cooking for the rest of the month but like i think that's probably the the major stuff i'll be surprised beyond like the action system because we haven't seen the action system yet i'm not expecting anything else all right here we go so the second half hopefully we got some other good stuff with this oh. agent information part two major target suppression mission sign of the planet breaker rank two Huh? That's Solus, right? Malignant Dark Falls Solus enhanced from rank one. Oh god. <laughs> Here we go, we're reusing the bosses again. 
Oh, what? Oh, it's actually very... It's changed a lot. Oh, my God. Okay. No, the maximum number of participants is four, the same as rank one. Failure conditions, five incapacitations exceed the time. Okay, so it's similar there. Okay, but it's... Oh, it's very different, though. Oh, it's like a little swing. In, what the... Okay, so it's actually gonna be like a different fight. Thank God. I think I'm just gonna be copy-faced. Okay, so it's gonna be like a new fight. Holy... This looks like a nightmare. Oh, God. <laughs> that looks a little nutty, yeah. All right, so that'll probably be fun too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with like them reusing the models and stuff as long as they change up the fight. Like, that's fine. As long as they change up the fight, it's, it's different. Then it's fine. New mission pass. But, like ammo or is that an accessory? Ooh, wings. Let's start searching the Oh, go Geass. I'm gonna have to mute it because of uh, DMCA. Yeah, Code Geass, we've been looking forward to this one. Mmm. I'll yeah, probably uh, be getting his outfit, or both of theirs, depending on how expensive it is. <laughs> yeah, looking nice. But I wonder what actually comes with it. This is all in game music. I'm not even gonna take a chance. Because <laughs> last time I did, it's just like, yeah, ruined. Game over. <laughs> then I had to like completely mute that section of the VOD, which was annoying. AC scratch ticket, Kogia style. That actually looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. Yeah, I wonder what they got for like. I wonder what would they do for like weapon camos if there's any. Oh, CC. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like weapon camos or like emotes or whatever. Like I definitely see like the outfits, like for sure. Like what else? What they do with this? I think they said there was gonna be like a music disc too, or like maybe the opening. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah. There's voices as well. And I got the helmet. I even got hers. Okay. Got these little wings. I don't remember those. The claw. It's been so long since I watched this show. <laughs> Yeah, I got some stamps, voices, and collab illustrations. <laughs> These stamps, looks like they just like took a chunk out of the anime and just slapped it onto stamp, what the hell? They don't even have like anything to them. Oh my god. Ooh, backdrops. The, the backgrounds. And vital gauge designs. Ooh. Pretty neat. Yeah, the backgrounds are gonna be, uh, I wanted more because with, um... The card game thing coming out in July. I think it uses your backdrop when showing when you're bursting somebody. So maybe people want it for that. Nightmare frame mech. <laughs> That's like the little mech that he has. And the mech that she has. Ma Macer vibration swords. Okay. Looks like it's for a lot of weapons. Super Varus. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember these weapons. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember. <laughs> RP type free moving wired right arm part. That is a mouthful of a name. Oh my god. I just trying to type that into the shop. Jesus Christ. Okay. I mean, that's pretty neat. I got a little pistol here that's probably gonna be like weirdly used. Yeah, look well, like how they use it as a rifle. I wish that they changed the animations so it actually like looks like you're holding a pistol and not holding it like a rifle <laughs> or whatever. Uh, that's supposed to be used as like a gun blade too. Okay, the twin machine guns. Not bad. That that works. We got build parts for this stuff. Why they keep doing this? Probably because it's just easy. It'd be more work trying to animate a whole pistol thing for camos. Emotes code Gias. Ooh. I'm gonna throw out the Gias there. Lancelot idol. So this is like the mech. Right? The mech stuff. Yeah. Oh, so that gives you, like, the little wheels back there. Alright, there we go. So let's, uh... Unmute it. <laughs> the giant mutants come back, okay. And the 26. I'm gonna say it's the same. Ikarongo Geo, Wallon Geo. So I guess people are gonna be farming the dreads. I wonder if we're gonna have the King Captain skin, too. Yep, we are. There it is. 
the level of dread enemies in target sectors will increase during this period, so probably like more towards maximum level instead of like 50 range. <laughs> They're not on your range. <laughs> did you think? Let's look at a summary of the updates with some slides. I guess more chances to get those camos and accessories, cosmetics, whatever. Rank two is yeah, Solus return. I mean, this looks cool. If like a lot of it is changed, I mean, I'll definitely be trying to complete it like right away. This is like a a few weeks after, a couple weeks after the field. Solus. So I got some ample time to try out the other new stuff. Making this an extremely difficult quest. That is the big question, right? Yeah. Are the rewards actually going to be good this time? Because the rank one Solus was abysmal. The drops were so bad, but I think to take it on, they've been getting better with the rewards. I wonder what it will have though. Like, will it just drop, like, Wingard or maybe the Aridim series in here? Oh, no, it sounds like the Aridim thing is going to be exclusive to the field at first. Yeah, like, maybe Wingards. Probably some more of those Ad Preset 1 things. Like, Foundia. Uh, I don't know, more Starl Souls, which is whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know. You can accept this quest as new cosmetics, maybe. From the teleporter in the I don't know. Section of Central Retum. So slap on your top gear. <laughs> steal your heart for battle. No, we still don't have a full guard on Madi, yeah. In addition, we'll be adding a title task in conjunction with this quest. And the title task quest for the weekly task will change to Sign of the Planet Breaker Rank 2. Ah, uh, okay, so there's gonna be... Okay, so the weekly is going to be changing to this once this happens. So no more Dalian <laughs> for the weekly 20 SG. That makes sense. Yeah, I wonder how bad it's going to be. Because, like, you're definitely going to want to upgrade then because yeah, we're getting plus 90. So this is going to be, like, a big change in terms of our DPS. Getting plus 90 and a new augment slot. So that's a lot more potency. So I think it's going to be a giant shift. <laughs> so all the stuff from before is going to feel really stupid easy because we got a new augment slot coming up because so we're going to be getting like i don't know like 20 30 percent more potency with all it multiplying and everything and yeah also the ex augs with their different effects so it's going to feel very different <laughs> like trying to do the previous things versus this new stuff so i wonder if like dalian would just be like a piece of cake then just smoke him <laughs> that's why i'm gonna be even easier <laughs> yeah maybe maybe yeah just everything's gonna be easy like super easy um, like, doing the purple triggers is also going to be easier, like the Alio EX thing. So getting Gigas 4 is going to be pretty quick, so maybe a lot of people will get Clan Gigas Mass Day if they actually farm that kind of content. Unless if it's just everybody's going to be busy with the new field instead. I, I don't know. All classes can take this one on. It really depends on the rewards that we can get. When you feel the need for speed. With everything. Coming up. Powerful support. Oh, oh and SG support's coming up, okay. Uh, it looks like it's the same kind of deal. Omega Trial S. Oh, I feel like that's not really worth. It's super easy to get Mega Trials as long as you just do the purple trigger. I don't think this is really worth it, but yeah, you know, maybe to somebody it is. Items are returning in. <laughs> yeah, Mega Trial S. I, I, I guess. June Whatever. In uh, my opinion, it's like super easy. I, I don't even know why Mega Trials are worth like several, several hundred thousand a setta. Considering how easy it is to make. Like, I feel just like. <laughs> that unwilling to do the purple trigger. <laughs> Every single time you run it, you can get a Mega Tree out. It's just insane to me. The lineup has like it's so, so easy. With hot items like the augment capsules, high Maybe just because like, the, the demand is higher than what people are churning out, possibly. Yeah, it's just people are super lazy about it. Yeah. Are back again. Including preservation items that will return the weapon or Funny armor used as a material. I mean, if it's the matchmaking, I don't know. I guess people are just busy doing like other new stuff, like Crimson Realm and whatever. So strengthen the weapons and armor you have acquired, and aim for even greater heights. Yeah, with plus ninety around the corner, um, I think it might be smart to build up some endemios then. So yeah, maybe doing uh, the Crimson Realm stuff might be smart. But get some like gold from twos, change them into endemios and whatnot. NGS we're gonna need a lot. The 33rd edition of the mission. And I didn't see anything about a new endemio like thing. A number of stars, which you earn by completing tasks. You can receive rewards commensurate with your level. You got 1,000 already. Nice. In addition to the. But even if um you don't need a ton, like people are definitely going to be buying some, so like it might be worth to sell as well, because like usually when there's a new 
enhancement increase like that, then Demios just, or the gold prims skyrocket in price because everyone's just buying them up. And there's just a way higher demand. So you can make pretty good money. And there's other special AC scratch tickets. Okay. So this is on the 26th. There's some revivals. Rewind collection June 24. And then an accessory revival. Okay. This is just based on stuff from the last few years of the same time periods. And you can get a Lux Health Finale S as a scratch count bonus. Ooh, there you go. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, okay. Has there been Gland Gigas Mass Day S yet as a scratch count bonus? I, I don't remember. I'm surprised I haven't seen it yet. If it hasn't happened. Yeah, so there's two rewinds. That'll be happening at the, the end of the month. And it looks like that's everything. Wasn't there supposed to be the action system? What happened to that? Did they delay it? I'm guessing they're gonna talk about it in the this. Yeah, the action system was supposed to happen. Unless that's a July thing instead. But it didn't seem like that was gonna be the case. Okay, well let's just see what ha what they say in the operation report. In the dev letter. So hopefully they explain the armor transfer thing more. And they gotta bring up the action system, right? Because I thought it was supposed to happen in June. The NGS operation report. I hero arise select. Unless I'm just crazy. Comments from players to bring to the development and live. Yeah, the thing that was supposed to be like the the dark blast of NGS. For the SUV weapon, kind of like from, from the universe. To share with you. We'll start with the letter from the developers, a message from the dev team to the players. Allow me to read it to you. All right, here we go. We got the dev letter. So let's explain some things. We would like to thank all the ARCs out there for continuing to play NGS. Moving forward, we will provide information on the intended implementation of updates introduced in this program and our plans for future improvements in the form of a letter from the developers. <laughs> yeah, I do like this is like more of a normal thing. I would like to start more context. with City Exploration. Nameless City Exploration. We started the development of this quest aiming to have a well-balanced mix of elements, including both casual gameplay in an open field, like with exploration sectors and combat sectors, and more grind-heavy content like Lucille. Grind-heavy. Oh god. Therefore, <laughs> unlike Lucille Exploration... Yeah, I'm actually looking here, and it says 32, on, I think, as, as the players in the upper left. So is it like a 32 out of 32, just like field they can run around in? <laughs> So, so I think it's not really an instance. It's more just like a like an open thing. It's like other exploration zones in other regions. But this is going to be more interesting, <laughs> like an actual exploration zone that you do stuff in. There's no matchmaking before the start of the quest. Yeah, no matchmaking. Players are free to jump in and out. Yeah, they're answering it right there. Exploration sectors. However, there is a time limit for exploring the field. A time limit. By providing a goal for players to collect as many items yeah, as they did show the time limit. chests within the set time, players get different results every time they play through. So you can just do it over and over again, though. On the time... I don't know how I feel about the time limit thing. Like, I guess, like, you go in... And, like, the, the better that you do within that time period, I'm guessing your point rate percentage increases. And, like, every time you... You know, end the time, reset, it's going to reset that point rate bonus. So you got to do, like, better and better in those time periods, because it's probably like, kick you out and then you got to go back in. That would be kind of annoying, though, I, I feel. Unless if it just, like, automatically resets and you get to stay there. We'll have to see how that works. I feel like that's going to be an annoyance, <laughs> if anything. And also, because it is a 32 out of 32 room, if you do get kicked out of that room, I guess it's going to, like, filter a lot of people out, right? They won't be able to just, like, stay in a room. Which would be kind of hard to, like, stay with full... Unless if you can password this. I mean, you can password everything else in the game. So maybe you can make a password room? It would just reset? Yeah, it sounds like like it's an exploration zone, though. And, like, you have your own time limit. So I, I wonder how that's going to work. Like, is it every time that you hit the end of the time? Like, it counts down to zero? Like, is it just going to reset your point bonus and reset the chests? Or is it going to, like, take you out and you gotta enter back in? Mm. Next up we'll see. is the new 11-star Eridim weapon. The 11-star. Available in the Nameless City. 
So that that means you gotta keep an eye on the time too, and spend your points before the time goes out. I'm guessing, otherwise you just lose the points. Same with like just the mechanic of the more points you have, the more damage you're gonna take, and if you die, you lose half the points. So you really just gotta spend your points as soon as you get them. It sounds like. EX augments affixed when you acquire one. However, its baseline performance is inferior to the 11 star Wingard weapon series already available. So its baseline performance is worse. But it has the EX augments. Red, Eridim weapons are relatively more accessible than previous top rarity weapons. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be like the standard. Right here. This is going to be like the standard that people should have. Plus, so, moving into this new update, everybody should be starting to get 11 stars. Put them up for sale in your personal shop. So you can't sell them. If you don't yet have a Wingard weapon, snagging an Eridim weapon will be a big help in your battles. But it sounds like if you have a Wingard, you want to stick with it? I don't know, it really depends like, if the Augment Treasure thing, like if you can transfer EXs to Wingard. Yeah, it sounds like Wingard's just, like still better. Powerful EX Augments to your Wingard weapon. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, transfer the EXs to the Wingards, but you have to use the full transfer. Because it doesn't have EXs normally. And the only way to EX transfer is if the other thing that you're transferring to has the same number of EX Augments. So that also means you can't really replace your EX Augments unless you're for sure done with EX Augment of your set. Because <laughs> if you start replacing any, then you can't really EX, tra EX transfer as easy. Mm. I mean, like, they're all 4.5% potency and 2 point... Yeah, just 2% lower potency, so they're, like, they're better than most of the Augments that we have. As for the Augment Transfer feature, we weren't able to implement it sooner for a variety of reasons, despite having received many requests from players. But as we recognized this feature was necessary to realize the EX Augment gameplay we wanted, we made the final push to deliver this functionality. Yeah, it's... Like, if you didn't have this with the EX thing, it's, it would have been bad, yeah. It definitely... It's good that they push it out. Require a rare dedicated item, the N Augment Transfer Pass. Oh, did they answer here? These are mainly available by obtaining titles related to forthcoming content and by collecting Transfer Pass vouchers rewarded for completing limited time tasks. Oh. Okay. When you acquire an Eridim series weapon, it will have three EX Augments affixed randomly out of over 20 potential types. Over 20? There's more than 20. The three types are fixed together as is. Therefore, we decided to implement a feature to transfer only EX Augments to resolve the issue of players not being able to enhance their equipment until they get the ideal combination. Yes, they don't want people to like forever headache about the RNG of the EX Augments, which is very surprising that they are forthcoming with that. <laughs> like, the, it, it's surprising that they didn't just let it be RNG of like, oh yeah, you just gotta keep getting the weapons until you get the perfect combination. I'm very surprised since everything else is RNG in this game. But yeah, so it sounds like the transfer pass is going to be through titles and limited time tasks, at least for now. So you are limited in how many that you can get until they, you know, come out with more. You can't just, like, endlessly grind for them. But I wonder how much of these passes they're going to give out over time. Because if it's, like, all, like, every time that they do limited time stuff, which, you know, every other month is a seasonal event, so maybe if they get several every other month, I don't think that's a, that, that bad. Really, that, that sounds fine. <laughs> to be honest. Because, like, one pass does a full transfer. Limited time tasks, not quests. Well, yes, but usually with LTQs comes limited time tasks, or the seasonal events have limited time tasks attached. That, that's why I'm saying seasonal events. I mean, they can also do tasks like outside of seasonal events too, but that's when the majority of them happen. Yeah, it's only one pass to do a full transfer from a weapon to a weapon or an armor to an armor. So, like, you only need four passes to do a full everything transfer from all three of your armor pieces and one of your weapons. So. I mean, if you can get that amount, like, every other month, <laughs> if that's how many passes they're going to give, it's, that, that's just going to be really good. Because all that you really need, in my opinion, is, like, every six months, which is what, usually when they do a rarity change, you only need the four passes for then. 
So if you can build up more, <laughs> more than four in that time period, then this is actually this actually works well. <laughs> this actually works well. And I think that the reason why they did this is like set it up this way with titles and limited time tasks. It so encourages people to play more often as well. <laughs> so it's not tied to something that you can just endlessly grind to be done with it or do it whenever. You have to be on during certain periods of time to get more of them. <laughs> I mean, the titles are forever, but they're one and dones. Yeah, like with them being time to, uh, tied to limited time tasks, it's probably going to encourage people to play more in the, the lower periods of time, which is usually seasonal events. If they are really vying for a augment transfer. They really want to, uh, to get it done. Complete 120 daily quests. Yeah, the, the same kind of things where we got the master cubes from. Possibly. I mean, I could see that. I mean, is that all that bad? I think this is like a fine... Like, this is fine. It, it's better than it being purely, like, monetized. Like, to hell. Or it's like, oh yeah, you need to spend 1,000 AC to get a pass. Or something like that bullshit. Or, oh, you need to scratch on this AC scratch and it's a scratch count bonus. Like, that would really suck and just... It would be pointless. It would be like as if it didn't exist. So this is definitely where I wanted it to be in some regards. Also, the Eridim series doesn't require a transfer pass for augment transfer. So it is easier to start by enhancing the Eridim series first and then performing an augment transfer using the Eridim series weapon when you get a stronger weapon. Okay, so with Eridums, you can just transfer for free. Period. It sounds like period. So even if it's just EX or if it's a full transfer, you can transfer. Okay. So that's probably why in that video we didn't see that there'd be a pass for the EX thing. Okay. I understand now. But it, it, it's also for full transfer. So that means if you, like, upgrade really hard into... The Aerodim, you can transfer for for free from it. So that really helps out like a new player or even a veteran player. But it's gonna be a bit weird because like if you already upgraded, for instance, like, this is only gonna be a problem for like right now <laughs> and not really like later. But if you upgraded it already, you kind of need a transfer pass to go into an Aerodim. But then it's gonna overwrite the EXs. I don't know how that's gonna work. That's gonna be weird. I don't think you can really make it work. I think if you already upgraded to a weapon, it's like impossible to like work around that if you want the EXs. Yeah, you're gonna have to make a you're gonna have to put Lux and Glan on it and whatever else. The another two set of augments. Unfortunately. I mean your your armor is fine. There's no like EX armor. Yeah, pretty much GG, yeah. If you want the EX things. Which it looks like you do. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Because there's no partial transfer. It's full transfer. So if you do a full transfer from your current weapon to an Aerodim, it's going to overwrite the EX things. Which, that sucks. <laughs> that that, that kind of sucks. Um, well, I guess that just means I don't put a Natty or um, the Glangigas Nasty on my weapon. Because I haven't done that yet. But it's going to suck for people to have. <laughs> uh, oh well. It is what it is. Like I said, it's only going to be a problem for now. And as we move forward, we already know. That's the case. Just remove the augs and current weapon. That's not how it works. If you have empty slots, it's still going to overwrite the EXs. Like I'm saying if you're using like a 10 star, that's what I mean. If you're using a 10 star with upgraded, if you already have a wing guard, like, I don't know, just stick with that, but then you won't have the EXs. I don't know. I think you're just screwed. <laughs> I think you're just screwed if you upgraded. Which is... Kind of shitty because they had these uh, boost events to upgrades in this last month twice. This this week, I think, and the first week. So it kind of sucks. But it doesn't overwrite the EXs. Uh, it sounded like it did. <laughs> so with this, it completely replaces. Or it completely replaces whatever exists. Yeah, let's say you have a wing guards and you got a new Aerodin with EXs that you want. And your wing guard's already upgraded. So if you try to take the EXs and put it into your wing guard, it's gonna replace whatever you have on the wing guard, no matter what. Even if you have empty slots on the Aerodim, it's just going to completely replace it. It takes the three EXs and all those empty slots and puts it on to your wing guards. It doesn't keep anything. <laughs> it doesn't keep anything at all. 
and you can't do the EX transfer with it because the Wingard doesn't have EX augments naturally. It can only EX transfer if it has an equal number of EX augment slots. So it already needs the EX augments. So, yeah. That actually would be a step to get the new EX slots. <laughs> to be fair, it's free. You don't need a pass to transfer from the Aerodim. Is what they just said. So you can even do the full transfer for free to get the EX augments on something like the Wing Guard. But if you're already upgraded, yeah, <laughs> it's going to replace everything that you have, unfortunately. Yeah, you only have to do it once. And once you do it once, you can augment all the other best in slots on there, either again or for the first time. And then you'll have the three EXs and the four whatever augments that you put on it. And then afterwards, you can just do EX augment transfer. And that will not replace the rest of your augments, only the EXs. So that's what you would do. And once again, that will be free, not needing passes, because the Aerodims transfer without a pass. Yeah, with the armors, you currently don't have to worry about that, unless if they have EX augments for armors eventually. <laughs> Which, who knows if they will. I mean, it doesn't seem like the EXs are too, too broken. But it's more like unique, kind of changes up your gameplay a bit. Yeah, they're just 4.5% potency and 2% floor, which is good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like busted. It's not busted because, like, I mean, we got 5% with the Lux. We got, what, 4.75% with the Glan. And then with the Anadi, we got 5% and like 3% floor or 4% floor. So, I mean, it's just going to like push out some others. Yeah, I guess, um, what, what would you have as, like, the fourth? You, you would have a Natty, you would have Glangagus Maste, you would have Lux Half and Alley, and then I guess you would have Gladia, right? Well, well, how much potency is Gladia again? Is that 3.75? Yeah. So I think that's the next best thing, right? So that would be what you would go with. If you're trying to get the best of the best. Alright, so that was the end of the letter. Continuing on to the next section. I think overall, uh, the, the system's good. And the new area seems fun. I don't think it's actually too bad. I'll have answers from the I think the augment transfer is like a nice teams. middle ground of where I wanted it to be. Here is the first one. Okay, let's see, what are the questions? ...horizontally in the current Urgent Quest victory performance. It is difficult to see members at the back. <laughs> Could you make like I put them on little see? pedestals or something? Here is their answer. For the victory In screen. To this feedback, we plan to create a victory performance with a composition that clearly shows party members at the back for future urgent quests featuring okay. a victory performance. That was their answer. It's not a not a huge thing, but you know, it, it's nice just to show off your characters because you do put do a lot into it. Plans to update the product it is what it is. The treasure shop lineup. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a big one because like the treasure shop lineup has been like stale. Like, a lot of the augments have been so, so outdated, and they still ask star gems for them, which is insane. Items and a lot of star gems at that. The current game environment. One thing worth it is, like, if you care about music discs, or the stickers in the in the Meseta thing. And then for the SG, it's just, like, try boosts, I guess, and the augment 20%. Oh, I guess augment item protection, too. But other than that, there really isn't anything worth it. In order to better reflect the current state of augments, we plan to make an adjustment to the augment capsules listed in the treasure shop there it is. in a June update. Changes will include removing some augments from the current lineup and some should be almost all of them. Of high demand LC capsules appearing. So they're still going to have the LCSs in there. I, I noticed that there were some LCs. So I guess like if you really wanted to get the LCs early as a new player, you can do that. But I feel like it's not to, I guess you don't really need to do that. Like, LCs aren't everything. <laughs> it's so easy to get the LC hogs. So, yeah, I don't know. We will also be adding Defi class capsules from P2 to P4. Which should... So they're going to put, like, Defi S's? In there? <laughs> okay. I guess that's fine. But I, I feel like people... <laughs> when Defi's first came out... I feel we made the mistake of replacing their main set of gear with it. So hopefully it's not going to be a trap for, like, players that don't know. 
and just see, oh, look, 7% potency. Let me slap this on. Oh, look at that crit rate. Mmm, yummy. When they, uh, it doesn't actually apply to, like, majority stuff in the game. <laughs> Support and dual quests. Uh. That was their answer. Honestly, they should just make, like, a, like, a, just a generic dual aug. <laughs> so I don't need, like, a million different fucking sets. Let's move on. To like, condense it down, Jesus Christ. The all ship Ooh. matchmaking implemented for Lucille exploration is a great feature. Yeah, are they gonna add this to other stuff? Some bugs at the beginning. Do you have plans I'm sure they would. To for other quests? We apologize for the inconvenience at the beginning with the bugs and the unscheduled maintenance to address them. As we have received a lot of positive comments on this feature and requests to make it available in other quests. It'd be great to have it in like the harder content. We are looking into or LTQs or something. That was their answer. Wait. It looks like implementing all ship matchmaking for all quests is difficult as it involves a variety of tasks to support the specifications for each quest. Okay. But I'll give you an update in a future episode once we have a plan in place. So basically it's still in the early stages where it's just like in one quest. So it's probably going to take a while to see it in other things. It's probably only going to be in like major content too, not like every little thing. That's what it sounds like. Oh well. I mean, at least we have it. <laughs> was not expecting it at all. So at least we have it in some capacity. Moving forward, we will continue to select and bring your questions and feedback to the development and operations teams. And yeah, I can see them do it in like urgent quests, uh, the four man boss content, maybe LTQs, maybe, or even like purple triggers. I think that would be like the kind of content that like really could use it. Let's start. Alright, so here's just all the extra campaigns and stuff. So we got through the mo majority of the stuff. Beginning June 5th, the Gear Up Your Class special campaign will be held for fighter and gunner classes. A limited time task will be released for the renewed fighter and gunner classes. Just to play fighter and gunner for stuff. Class to your desired level. Uh, just like get defeat enemies to earn kills with it, get to a certain level, whatever. Yeah, it looks like we got an enhancement campaign though. A campaign to support the enhancement of the Eridim series will be held. Yeah, it actually looks like pretty nice. 75% discount on an Enmaceta enhancement costs. And it's going to be guaranteed great successes, and I guess more, maybe augment. In the campaign Boost. Period. Kind of similar to like what we got with the seasonal event for everything. Accessible. It looks like there's another uh, boost campaign for everything, for all equipment. So there's a 5%. 5% <laughs> boost? Not 50. 5. During the item enhancements. Another discounts. The Quest Conquer SP Scratch Ticket Rush Campaign allows you Rush to get campaign. up to two special scratch tickets every day by completing any quest. That sounds easy. <laughs> just do a quest, get Let's two tickets. And draw the special scratch like crazy. Like crazy. Go crazy, go stupid. Super Sale, Summer Sale, 2024. On the 26th, there's a sale. For AC. Get that AC, guys! It looks like uh, 10 bucks gets you 2200 AC on majority of stores. And then on Steam, you just get 1200 AC bonus, but it costs the same. As, uh, as it usually does. Yeah, I don't know why with the Steam they have to do it differently like that. I can't, like, discount from June 26th. the pack. The sale is different in every store. And you can make purchases to get the bonus once in each store. In each store, so you gotta download it in several spots to get all the, the stuff. Because we're scummy. And <laughs> you need to download it a million times. <laughs> uh, God damn it. So then no people do that. And they uh, encourage it to happen. <laughs> yes, use our sale in every single store to get a ton of AC. Instead of just making it like, oh, you can get this five times or something. They want they actually want you to go to each and every store. Do it in a weird roundabout way. Oh my god. The Super Fantasy Festivals. This is the twelfth anniversary for July, okay. July fourth marks the twelfth anniversary. So everything's just super now. <laughs> everything is super. When everything is super, nothing is super. So there should be a lot of stuff like this. We are planning to hold a large campaign, the Super Fantasy Festival, to commemorate our twelfth anniversary. We have prepared a super fantastic campaign, so please look forward to it. A lot of juicy rewards, a lot of bonuses. That's all for this episode of NGS Headline. Alright, so that's everything. They didn't say a word about the action system. The 25th is the next headline. Now I'll talk about the July stuff, hopefully with the card game inside, and 
I guess maybe the action system there? Like, or did they just, they just scrapped and just got rid of it? Yeah, they didn't say anything about the action system. Like, I mean, they teased it, though, the last headline. So I thought it was supposed to come with this June update. But yeah, overall, this headline was uh, pretty good, I would say. Like, the augment transfer thing, to me, was definitely confusing at first. But I think we, we got it down now. Um, the exploration zone stuff looks really good. I can see myself actually, like, being in there more so than, like, a combat zone. <laughs> it sounds more entertaining. It looks like there's, like, with the trials, side missions, too. Maybe get extra points or something. So don't take damage in this one. Whatever. There's gonna be trials everywhere. They're gonna be changed up a little bit. Side missions. Puzzle running around parkour stuff. Getting points to open the chest to get the good loots, the materials, and the new weapons, the Aerodim stuff. Then plus 90 for enhancement, level 90 as well. When I mean, the level cap raise doesn't really matter as much. Yeah, it seems like we're not getting like more skill points still, or more class skills for everybody. So I was like, maybe with the new field we'd get like more training and stuff, but I guess not. Like, when are we gonna get skill points in? <laughs> it's been so long. It's been so so long since we gotten more skills. So I feel like it's a it's a shame, but. Hopefully, eventually. I, I don't know. Yeah, like, some of the AC scratches look pretty good, but, I mean, that's just AC scratches. New story? Uh, this can be hit or miss. They usually so show, like, some of the good bits from that story. And then, like, it's super short. <laughs> that's how it's usually been. But, hopefully this is, like, a full chapter. Because it's not just chapter 7, right? They didn't say chapter 7 part 1 or whatever. Because the way that they did chapter 6 was god-awful. It was so bad, I hated every bit of it. <laughs> basically. Especially just the first portion of Chapter 6. So hopefully this Chapter 7 is so much better, and actually is longer than, like, 10, 20 minutes. <laughs> and maybe, like, a couple hours, like the previous chapters were. <laughs> as long as you, like, sit through the scenes and whatnot. Because, Jesus Christ, man. Chapter 6. Like, the only good part was, like, maybe, like, the ending. Like, with the Ina stuff. So hopefully a good story with the new fields, and hopefully explains more about resurgent things, what's going on with Alpha. Or if this place is even on Alpha. <laughs> we still don't know that, right? We know that's not on Lucille. We get to it through Lucille, and we teleport to there, but it's not Lucille. Not Lucille at all. Yeah, that EX thing is probably the biggest surprise. The EX augments are a huge surprise. There's over 20 of them, they said. So that's gonna be like a huge RNG gamble of like trying to get the good ones. Because with both of the transfer systems, the EX and the full transfer, it sounds like it's going to do, like, all of it, right? So, with the EX transfer, it's going to do all three to the next piece. So you need to get the perfect, the perfect roll of EX augments to then transfer to your wing guard or whatever other future weapon we're going to have. That could be annoying, with there being over 20 of them. It could be annoying. Because, yeah, you can't do, like, oh, I want this EX from this weapon, I want this one from this. It has to be the perfect three. It has to be all three that you want. So, I don't know. I feel like that's going to be, like, annoying, but maybe with how easy you get the these 11 stars, it won't be super bad. I mean, basically, just, like, uh, the random stats in, like, Diablo or, like, other gacha games like Genshin with the Relic System or with Wuthering Waves, the Echoes. It'd be something similar to that, right? <laughs> but you don't actually have to, like, spend resources to see which augments that you have. You can just like see it. It's like, oh, these are not the ones that I want. Let me just go for the next set. Go for another weapon to see what I get. Yeah, I think this is gonna be like a huge change for the game moving forward. Because it actually like changes how your game style is, like how you play. Because like giving you a sidestep counter after a break ball was one of them. That, that seems like to be one of the more significant ones that we saw. It looks like increasing TP recovery based on doing different PAs instead of just spamming the same PA could be useful for people. It looks like there's PB gauge stuff and a whole bunch of other things, I imagine. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the entire pool of EX augments are uh, as we can farm this in a few days. Uh, but besides that, besides augment transfer in this new zone, yeah, like the plus 97 augment slots. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's like a, like a good thing or what. I mean, hey, more damage, right? <laughs> But that means more resources we're gonna sink into every piece of gear going forward. And I didn't see any change to like how we enhance. Like we're still gonna have to like buy a limit break shit from like 50 to 90 or something. And then like that's so much Masetta. 
and then you gotta use all the endemios it's gonna take forever like are we, are we gonna need like another hundred endemios to get to plus 90 from 80 so like 300 endemios in total or i mean like 150 if you great success or whatever but still like oh my god that's so much that is so so much it just keeps discouraging people from playing multiple classes because you have to do that every single weapon. Like, every single time that you're trying to go to a different class. It, it's just strange to me that they went from, like, with the beginning of this game, wanting everybody to play every class, and now it seems like so against doing that concept. But we definitely need something beyond a demo to make this upgrading easier. Uh, I think we, we know Astrio is one. I think Hyperio 2 is one, which is better than a demo. But that, I think, has only been on... The EXP weapons you get out of the AC support scratch, but they could make that an augment to drop too. Who, who knows? Yeah, getting either of those in content would help the situation. But I would like to see the limit break baseline be way higher up there, because it's going to be so annoying to do plus 50 to plus 90. Limit breaking every 10 levels. That's just so stupid. It's just too much. But yeah, the augment transfer though is going to help with like taking a part of that away. The, the pain of going from one weapon to the next. Because now you can just do a full transfer. And it seems like the passes are not going to be too bad to get. Um, but yeah, for like the creative space, like blinking the spaces, I didn't think that was going to happen. Like a lot of people wanted that to happen. I didn't think Sega was actually going to do it. <laughs> but. They're actually doing that. We're going to have a teleporter to space to space. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's getting closer to like VR chat kind of things, which I definitely like. Oh yeah, Solus. <laughs> Solus. I was not expecting this. I mean, maybe I was. I mean, they reuse stuff a lot. But I was not expecting it to be so different. At least what it sh what it shows, like all these different moves and everything. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, June is going to be fun to play. It's going to be good to go back to the game, because I've been basically taking somewhat of a break this month, not doing a whole lot, like playing it a bit here and there. And like the last week, I haven't like played at all. So this is going to be good to like go back into and like play the game a good amount again. <laughs> and July sounds like it's also going to be a good time because of the card game. So the next couple of months, I think I'm going to be playing this a lot, a lot more than I have been. But we'll see once it, we actually like get to it and how it feels. Yeah, I think overall, the said line, I mean... 9 out of 10, basically. I don't know if I'd say 10 out of 10 or not. I mean, maybe 10 out of 10. Like, I think it's close. Yeah, it's pretty goaded. Like, it's definitely very good. It's definitely very good. I don't think it's, like, super mind-blowing. I, I wouldn't recommend everybody just come back in droves. Like, oh my god, it's it's so good now. Oh, shit, it's so fucking good. Everybody play again. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, like, at that point yet. I think that would be like a 10 out of 10, but the game's definitely getting better. We definitely have seen that over the course of this last like half year, like with the rewards, with how we are upgrading the content, how that feels. Like sure, the content is still coming out a bit slow, but it's like that content that is coming out is better. <laughs> it is better. Yeah, I I I'm excited for it. Definitely excited for it.